Welcome to a special episode of Film Speak. I am Bill, and as you can see, we have Joanna has stepped in for Lana. This is our special Horror Hound episode as Burnwell hit the convention and got to talk to lots of filmmakers and film lovers. I'm sorry I missed it this time around. I love going to Horror Hound. How was it? You know, it was great. Nothing like, you know, being somewhere where you're surrounded by freaks like you. Like me? I, I meant like me, but you too. You're a bit odd. No arguments there. I hope I can be on hand next time, but I'm glad this time you and the gang got to go and be there. We talked to a lot of people, and I had some great interviews to share. Well, we will watch those, and then after that, we will be joined by our guest. Today, we have Matt Parmenter and Derek Katzow joining us at the table where we will talk film and then break down the classic Evil Dead 2. Groovy. <laughs> See you at the table.
Welcome back to Film Speak. Um, I'm sitting here with uh, Joanna, guest host for today. And uh, to we have over here um, Derek and uh, Matt here to discuss uh, filmmaking and the projects that they've been working on lately. Uh, so tell me, we'll start with uh, you, Matt. Right. Exactly what have you been up to with Witch Doctor Films? Uh, well, we've been doing it for about three years now. Our, our uh, most The film that we are going to have out uh, this summer is uh, Modesto. And that's a revenge film, much like a, like a 70s revenge film, with like a lot of a Western type feel. Maybe a little bit of that spaghetti Western-ish type thing to it. Um, characters, uh, there's a, a young couple, the, um, the wife is killed by this gang of thugs, and the guy is spending all of his time trying to find these guys, and he finds them in this town where they become the bosses of the town, sort of legitimate. And uh, he systematically is, uh, you know, killing each one of them, and uh, you know, and then, then, uh, you know, we take it from there. That that is my favorite, um, I guess, in the genre of spaghetti westerns. Sure. I, I love the revenge. Oh yeah, uh, the revenge story. So yeah. like, um, fistful of dollars yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, that yeah. is good stuff. Yeah. I know. I just said this is a little bit off the cuff, but talking about like the spaghetti westerns. Um, if you have Netflix, just watched, and Lana is the one who turned me on to it. It's a remake of The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly um, from China, a Hong Kong film. It's from called China? Yeah, it's called yeah. The Good, the Bad, and the Weird. Um, I think I've heard of that. Oh my God, see this movie. <laughs> I mean, it's on, off topic. I guess if since you people just are inadvertently watching, you should probably go watch it too. Um, but. Uh, yeah, I highly recommend it. If you like that genre, it's a, it's a new twist on that kind of uh, theme. Yeah, we should have that uh, film pretty soon here. Uh, I'd imagine uh, this summer we'll have it all all spit and polished and ready well. for uh, people to buy. Well, when it's spit <coughs> and polished, um, I hope you'll come back on and uh, try pimping it. Oh, uh, please. <laughs> we can <laughs> show, some <laughs> clip, <laughs> show some clips. Maybe, I could, uh, yeah. maybe I could bring um, Marcus Jackson, our uh, lead actor. He's, okay, he's very yeah. good. Marcus, yeah. Oh, you yeah. know Marcus. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Through Facebook, but yeah, yeah he's, no. He's a yeah. very good actor. Um, yeah, uh, I don't think it would have. It would have been. Uh, well actually, we we tried it with. We were going to have it um, like a Latino type feel. It was going to be uh, a Mexican fella, but um, but it didn't work out, and um, and we went with a um, a black type of uh, feel, and that was that was mm -hmm. very good. Yeah. Nice. Black exploitation meets spaghetti western. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, I yeah. love, that's I love a, mixing it up. That is great. Right. Well, yeah, that's <coughs> you create the best. Sometimes the best films when you mix uh, oh, yeah. mix genres. Oh yeah, I mean yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I like I love just the creative process and just mixing it all together and seeing what you're gonna get. I, I like doing. I like the kind of um, almost Robert Altman approach, um, where you do genre films, um, but don't do them in a genre way, like Mash. Mash yeah. was a war movie, right. right? It was done as a comedy, you know. Um, the macabre was that macabre and Mrs. Miller um, yeah. from the early '70s yeah. was done as a western with right. beautiful landscapes and everything, but it's actually this really quiet, intimate love story. Um, so uh, that's what I, I, I like taking it and shaking it up like that. Now, Derek, um, what have you been up to lately? Well, uh, we worked on a movie last summer with Joanne. Joanna. And um, I had ended up uh, working on this movie as one of the first projects I had had since I moved to Dayton. And uh, so getting to know people, getting to know how things worked in the city, and um, ended up working lighting, camera, assistant <laughs> direction, uh, <laughs> distribution, <Editor>. and <laughs> editor. Yeah, so it, it was a very intense, intense uh, both feet in learning experience. So mm -hmm. met my objectives. Yeah. Well, yeah, n networked and learned. Yes. Uh, that's the important things. Yeah. And then you also, it seems, didn't let, because, you know, troubles can come with filmmaking, um, not having enough personnel, and it seems that you were determined to fill in those gaps, which, you know, prob mm -hmm. problem solving is a big part of it. Sure, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's like any part of life. You've got to plan for something, and um, I used to be a wedding photographer, and I would tell the brides uh, on the morning of the wedding, well, you know, that plan we did is now guidelines because <laughs> it's not going to work that way. <laughs> And so you just have to jump in and do the things that need done. Mm -hmm. uh, you all know what the end product is supposed to be, so get it done. Yeah. Now, how did you confront the uh, challenges of editing? Um, well, first I went to lynda.com. <laughs> 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 um, I had done uh, movie editing actually since about 1973. My first movie editing project was when my uh, 
father came home with, you probably remember these, one of those little machines with the screen in the middle and the two handles. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I had all this footage that I had taken at the 1973 Canadian Grand Prix. So uh, favorite subject of mine, race cars, and it made it into my first little movie. Uh, and then iMovie came along and, you know, piddled around with all that stuff and then finally got into Final Cut Pro, which is the program I use now. And I know you use the Adobe product. Yeah, I'm more of an Adobe package, Adobe yeah. Pro. And I only yeah. use uh, Final Cut because I've just used Apple products all my life. And so I know that both packages are very good, but uh, it was fun. Uh, they seem to be equal. It just it comes down to whatever you learned first is usually sure. where your comfortability is. Yep, um, yep. You don't want to start relearning something right at the outset of the uh, a major project. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you just want to get it done and know that it's going to work. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, we learned a lot through the editing process. Uh, Matt and I were just talking before the, the segment um, that I probably learned more about the whole process during the editing phase than I did in all the, the production phase. Because in editing, you, you can see all the little things that you should have done back then to make the editing easier, and mm -hmm. now you're trying to fix it. Like uh, one scene where an actress opens a door with her left hand in the very next close-up cut, she's opening it with her right. Well, no, that doesn't work. Yeah. And you have to get fancy with the cutting to make it all work. So, you know, next time I'm not going to make those mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> but you do find problems. I mean, even in um, the breakdown film we're going to be doing today, Evil Dead 2, there is a scene where it looks like the chainsaw is in the wrong hand. Mm -hmm. But what happened was um, Sam Raimi didn't like the way his cross crossing the screen looked, so he took it and flipped the image. And the chainsaw is still in the same hand, but the image just been reversed. <laughs> It's funny, after you go through an editing uh, uh, process with, it, with a film, and then you start to watch all the professional productions on television, those little mistakes are all over the place. I just never picked them out before, but because you've been through the editing process, all of a sudden they're much more apparent. Well, e even one like um, Pulp Fiction, one of my favorite movies of all time, uh, there's one part in it where Bruce Willis, when he comes in to save um, Mr. Mr. Wallace, uh, Marcellus Wallace, and he kicks open the door and he comes in with a sword, takes the sword, kills the guy behind him. Yeah. And then you see the sword flash in front of Zed. And then you see him pull the sword out. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just a, that's just a, a context timeline yeah. problem. And it's, it's that. Well, <coughs> when you're a, uh, <coughs> a huge dork and you watch the same movie 60 times, I guess you, uh, you pick up on those sure. things. And it just goes to show you that even the most seasoned pros can make those kind of errors. Yeah. yeah. Um, three Men and a Baby. They have that famous scene where it's the the ghost child in the background where yeah. it's actually a stand-up. I think it was uh, cardboard cut out. Yeah, cardboard cut. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, so. uh, it's it's great to watch because you know, first you watch, you're like, oh my gosh, and then you go, oh wait a second. Well, yeah. <laughs> all the problems the same things with like Wizard of Oz mm -hmm. um, yeah. that they have because if you watch closely, like um, right before she tosses the bucket on the witch. Um, way, way in the back, you can see a guy with a toolbox yeah. Yeah. <laughs> walking <laughs> across the <laughs> cliff. Or the, or the geese one where they say it's the, um, or the, like, oh, um, the geese or uh, one, uh, some bird that was in it. Look, they said it was uh, one of the uh, dwarves uh, you know, killed himself. You know, yeah, you know, I've heard, oh, yeah, yeah. I've, I've heard yeah. that. There's like a yeah. shadow of something swinging. Yeah. But it's, like, but it's, it's a dwarf that hung bird. himself. And yeah, it was yeah. just like a bird that flew. Yeah. Yeah. Off the cuff, movie I had not seen in years and I'm currently looking for a copy of. Um, Under the Rainbow. Is it, uh, you guys remember this movie? Yes. Ah, <laughs> my man. <laughs> Nobody's ever heard of this flick. Um, <coughs> it's from uh, 1977, starred uh, Chevy Chase, and it was about murders on the set of Wizard of Oz. Oh, really? And yeah. Chevy Chase is a detective who comes in yeah. trying to uh, trying to solve them. Yeah. And uh, ki kind of a fun movie. Cool. Um, mm -hmm. From the time period. Nice. Yeah. Now. Um, Joanna, I wasn't at Horror Hound this year, uh, but Joanna was there. Yeah. We just uh, watched the interviews and everything. Um, what did you think of Horror Hound this year? I, I thought it was much better than last year. Uh, well, not having um, uh, Daryl there kind of probably helped. But uh, oh yeah, God, that, yeah, no. I guess that was. Yeah, that when was he canceled, I was like, yes, because yeah. the crowd isn't going to be that bad then, you know? <laughs> that was when wow. uh, Walking Dead was white hot yeah. in popularity. Yeah. But uh, this year was great. Um, yeah, we were uh, we were selling our films and um, our audio dramas and our comic books mm -hmm. and everything and my artwork and I ran out of stuff. It was just it was 
It was great. As I, as, as I told you, it, it, I didn't grow tired of people telling me how much they love me and, <laughs> and, how, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, Nobody I actually... Does. Nobody no, no. Does. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> I actually went to your um, <coughs> table. You weren't there, but Ebert was and uh, Jim McClure. Yeah. And uh, we talked to them a little bit about the audio drama and uh, some of the other films and whatnot. And um, I, I remember standing there, I'm like trying to interview, and people are kind of pushing me to, to get to like the table. And yeah. I'm like, okay, like give me a minute. You know, you can come talk to them when I'm done. But um, it, it did seem like you guys got a lot of, you know, fan yeah, it was, base. So it, it was, was, it was kind cool. of odd because, like, yeah. um, you know, people, w you know, said, hey, I seen your movie Nailbiter, and I really liked it. And when did you buy it? You know, who are you? When did you buy this thing? You know, so, you know, so. When did you go in my bedroom and watch my film? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like, I don't remember anybody buying this. But, you know, but yeah, it was, that was, it was really great. It, it, was, it was very nice. So. Yeah. Uh, and I have to say, I mean, I don't want to <coughs> give uh, too much of a... Uh, a personal plug for you, but uh, if you can check out this guy's artwork, um, it is incredible. Uh, order prints off him, especially some of his old. <laughs> your fi my favorites out of the work that you do is um, the hammer sketches. Oh, thank you, um, thank you. Um, well, with being that being said, I um, I'm going to be in a gallery, and I don't think I've probably even told anybody uh, this. I'm going to be in a gallery at the uh, Bram Stoker Convention in Wibley, England. Oh, wow. Wembley, England. Wow. Yeah, this guy set, uh, Mark Williams, he sets up stuff. And uh, he asked me, uh, I was in a digital gallery last year, and he asked me to mail out stuff this year. So I, I made it um, British intense. Nice. <laughs> so well, yeah, the hammer, yes. the Christopher Lee, some Peter Cushing. Yeah, Angry Pit and all that. So yes, yeah. nice. Love those films. Love yeah. Those films, so. I'm, a, I'm a big hammer. Well, you know, it's that the child of the 70s watching the midnight movies on Saturdays and... Uh, the Saturday afternoon, you know, um, creep show, oh, you know, Dr. Yeah. Creep, and mm -hmm. then has Superhost out of Cleveland was mm -hmm. another big one for me. I was me. wearing my Cool Ghoul t-shirt today. Yeah, yes. with the Cool Ghoul. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, th th those really embedded a strong love for the old Hammer films in me. Oh, yeah. Those, it, was, it was a sort of sweet and charming type thing with the, where these guys, these middle-aged uh, Weatherman or wh whomever they were, you know, dressing up in uh, grease paint and you know, dressing up with their costumes and the grease paint and all that stuff. <laughs> it was pretty fun. We used to have a similar show up in Canada that we would watch when I lived there, and uh, the host's name was L. Lee Yost, and he got a huge following. This was on CBC, and the show was called Dark Shadows. Oh yeah, and so oh, it was, it was yeah. kind of like that. And he would introduce all these really classic movies every week. It was fabulous. So you know, like you, I was glued to the television every time L. Lee came on. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I wasn't completely a kid who shut myself up. I still went outside, but, you know, in Ohio, you got lots of rainy Saturdays and Sundays, <laughs> you know, so those are a lot of um, childhood afternoons yeah. to be spent. We had a lot of snow up there. <laughs> <so> <laughs> they the same way. Snow yeah. in Canada? No way. Yeah. I, I can't see oh. that. Oh, come on, eh? I'm, gobs <laughs> I'm gobsmacked now. <laughs> well, I guess that's a, uh, a decent segue um, going from horror to um, we'll stop, take a little break give you a little something else to watch, and then be back in a couple minutes. We'll break down the absolute horror classic, Evil Dead 2. So please join us and don't go anywhere. <laughs> da -da.
mom. What's up? Oh, yeah? Yeah, well, we're going to be leaving out of here around 6 o'clock, so. Yeah, so Paul does not suspect a thing. It's going to be great. Oh, yeah, I think Taco Chi Chi is going to be the best setting for this party. It's awesome. Yeah, margaritas. You can't go wrong, right? Oh, yeah. It's going to be a blast. Absolutely, it's going to be so much fun, and in the morning we're going to have a lot to talk about if we don't forget what happened. Okay, all right, mom. I'll be, I'll be good. All right, I'll call you tomorrow. Okay, I love you too. Bye. I gotta get out of here. Well, welcome back to Film Speak. Uh, we're still sitting here with our guests, Matt and Derek. Joanna is still the co-host, and we're about to break down the classic movie, Evil Dead 2. Now, we'll start with you, Derek. What did you think of Evil Dead 2? Well, it was interesting because usually this kind of genre of movie is not my go-to movie, so when I first looked at it, I'm thinking, what is this? Um, and I'm wondering, okay, is this a horror movie or is it a comedy? <laughs> and uh, I quickly came to the conclusion that comedy came first, which was great, and then I loved it. Um, so um, uh, I, I loved the uh, sort of overplaying of the, the dialogue and uh, the uh, kitschy special effects and uh, the voluminous fountains of blood every time somebody was killed. I, I can see it being played in my high school and the kids just loving it, <laughs> rolling over laughing, and it, it became a cult classic. It would become a cult classic in my high school back in the 70s, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. How do you feel about the film, Matt? Uh, <coughs> it's a fun roller coaster ride, sort of like, um, sort of like uh, Nine Living Dead or something like that meets uh, Three Stooges. <laughs> you know, it's, um, I, thought, I thought it had a lot of that um, Hong Kong type of horror thing where like things are like flying across and then blood goes everywhere. It's, um, I remember watching that when I when it first came out, and uh, I was, I seen this, and it wasn't like today where it's like you know everything about something before it happens. And I watched this thing, and they're, they're in the woods, and I'm like, oh gosh, another slasher film. <laughs> I <can't> <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the biggest slasher fan in the world. And then, then you got this, and it was like, this is, this is screwy, this is kind of fun. <laughs> 
So yeah, it was, it was quite enjoyable. It's funny when you talk about the combinations of movies that you make into this. I, I came up with uh, the Rocky Horror Picture Show combined with Saturday Night Live, combined with Monty Python's Sam Peckinpah sketch called Salad Days. Have you ever yeah, seen that? Yeah, Salad yeah, Salad Days. So all those three things together made this movie to me. <laughs> salad Days, I can't believe you just brought that <laughs> up. That is Awesome. Any tennis, anyone? <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. And then, and then yeah. the piano lid coming down and yeah. no hands. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. and then it goes into slow motion with the blood. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. Sam Peckinpah's Salad Days. Yeah, yeah. that is yeah. awesome. I didn't care for Evil Dead 2. <laughs> and I know there's going to be a lot of fan people out there who hate me. Whatever. I don't care. I like Evil Dead, like the, the first. The first one, I felt it was more simplistic. And they, um, you can tell they really tried to make it into an, a, a good film. And then the second one, it was just, oh, we have a bigger budget. Let's just throw all the special effects and make it really, I don't know. I mean, some parts were fun. I like the, the, the blood, the like extreme amounts of gushing blood. I thought that was fun. I would want to be on the film where I got blood dumped on me. <laughs> that would be fun. But um, I didn't care for it. Sorry. Well, you are, though, the classic. You're a fan of horror films, right? Yes. So was yes. it a case of it didn't sort of meet your horrific expectations? Well, it, yeah, it, it was like you said, it was comedy first before horror. And I mean, I like I like both genres, but I kind of felt they tried to do too much with this film, which maybe that was their intention. But um, I, it got to a point where I was like, okay, well, this is, I don't know, it's kind of boring. <laughs> but I love the first one. I really do. But didn't you say like Ted directed the second one? Ted uh, Raimi. Sam Raimi. Sam, Sam, Sam he Raimi did, did both. Yeah. See, I didn't. I, I thought Ted directed it. Maybe I should have Googled that. Whatever. Ted was actually one of the actors. We were talking mm -hmm. about this. He was actually inside that big rubber costume of the mother when oh, he was she the, was really? um, I'll in her evil. Yeah. Yeah. Solid yeah, I remember that now. Yeah. And, and actually, know. Sam Raimi um, at the end when he first gets sucked back through time, um, Sam Raimi is uh, his cameos. He's the first knight who raises his sword. Oh. Is that right? Uh, to salute him. Oh. Mm. You know, you talk about the uh, the special effects difference and money differences and mm -hmm. stuff. When the first Evil Dead came out, they did it for nothing. It was um, like um, I actually looked that up. It was like three to four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And then the second one, they, their budget was almost four million. Um, Sam Raimi did a lot of these special effects in the first mm -hmm. one. He had been a stage ma magician. And so oh, the special okay. effects were modeled after mm -hmm. magic, tricks. magic tricks and yeah. illusions using, yeah. using sleight of hand misdirection mm -hmm. as special effects. And then with Evil Dead 2, he had all the big budget. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the guys, um, not of course Savini, because Savini got his start in um, 78 with um, Dawn of the Dead. But a lot of the guys that came after him in special effects who worked through the 90s on like Pumpkinhead, a lot of yeah. the classic horror movies, Evil Dead 2 was their big break because mm -hmm. he basically packed up all these guys, took them to North Carolina, um, and told them, he, he's, he's the one who gave them the freedom, whatever you want. Over the top, I want to see stuff that's never been done before. Yeah. I want you to take, take You could it tell to that they were level. all like really yeah. excited, <laughs> you know, okay, because yeah. it, it was, it was very over the top, and which is good for but them. But it didn't so. quite start out that way, though, no, because initially no. there was foreshadowing, like the car going over the bridge. You yeah. knew when you saw that the bridge was going to not last. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And really the comedy didn't, didn't start until Jake and the, the, uh, the suitcase on his back. Yeah. That's when it started to get funny. And then there was mm. the small things that really kept me into it, like Farewell to Arms, the book holding yeah. the, the hand down. <laughs> yeah. Um, you, know, you talked yeah. about the, him going with the knife, saying, who's laughing now? Who's he's not really laughing, now? he's screaming yeah. in, in pain. Yeah. Yeah. So there's all those little things that I was watching for, and it was watching for those little things that made the movie really enjoyable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. when, you, when, you see the, um, when you see him become Ash, and he's getting the chainsaw, and he's got the shotgun that he knocks off, and he's like, groovy, baby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're like, there's Ash. Yeah, so the, the, gro the growth of character. Yeah. Well, because he's had his sanity broken down, you know, oh, yeah. when the, in the scenes before that gradually has his mind chipped away until he no longer cares. Yeah. He's, he's yeah. not in suburbia anymore. He's, yeah. not, he's not living a life of, you know, normal life. Yeah. So well, you mentioned the shed scene. Um, we had talked about this just a little bit um, beforehand. Um, because uh, when Nightmare on Elm Street came out, Wes Craven had put Evil Dead, the original, playing on a TV. Um, and so, okay. kind of as a nod back, um, Freddy's 
uh, knife glove hand is on the wall with the tools mm -hmm. in the tool shed. Totally missed that. Wow. That was a huge night. Really and there's also an homage yeah. to the Exorcist in the movie. Did you catch that? Which one? The um, when the mother's singing down in the cellar. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah th th like the whole Demi thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you know, there's all these little things in the movie that. I'm sure you could watch it three or four times and pick up different mm -hmm. things each time. Yeah. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. Yeah. See, I, I had heard that this got made because um, of Stephen King. Oh. He was a fan of the original Evil Dead. Yeah. Um, mm. Was he a fan of the second one? <laughs> <laughs> well, he helped, he, helped, he helped get it made. Um, wow. Well, he, he, he approached uh, Dino De Laurentiis and uh, over a dinner convinced him that he should produce Evil Dead 2. Hmm. And, you know, they originally wanted to use um, footage from the original Evil Dead for the setup in the beginning of Evil Dead 2, but because of licensing reasons, they weren't allowed to. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so that's was it, it was an extension of Evil Dead, or was it a remake? It's an extension. Because it, it well, why, did, would, why would Ash go back to that cabin after the first one? He never left. There's a lot of discussion <laughs> on the web. Oh. 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 The oh. I just don't get it. Where do you get the girl, then? Yes. Uh, no, you see, that's what the whole beginning, because he couldn't show clips from the first Evil Dead, mm -hmm. you know, he basically uh, had to reshoot um, it all to explain the story <laughs> for the rest of Evil Dead 2. It wasn't a remake. Yeah. It's all still happening. It's the same day. Yeah, um, but in Evil Dead, I mean, he showed up with, with four people. friends. Yeah, it was, yeah, it four, was four, and they all <laughs> showed yeah. up at the cabinet so at once. So it was a more shorthand. It was a shorthand version, yeah, so okay. it would sure. catch you up because, yeah. yeah, it was owned by two different companies. It's an alternate um, for timeline. release of rights. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, because it, it read as a remake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't meant to be a um, a remake. It mm -hmm. was only because, um, well, he, he was mad because he wasn't a able to use footage. So, hmm. yeah. well, instead of uh, reshooting, you know, redoing it all, he just reshot it with the guy and the girl. Of course, you get that great line of. Um, I'm a man and you're a woman, <laughs> at, at least last time I checked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was all very lounge lizard the way he was coming on to her at the beginning of the movie. And then right. when she gets whisked away, um, he seemed pretty nonchalant about it. At that point, the comedy hadn't started, so I'm thinking, man, this guy's not really that great an actor. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then the comedy started, and I said, okay, I get it now. He does mm -hmm. have some great facial expressions, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did you he notice? really does. I noticed, like, his quote, I was like, wow, he can really kind of contort his face and really get Did you notice really the movie comes out in 87, and when he becomes evil, the makeup that he's gone is very similar to the Kardashian makeup in Star Trek. Yeah. which came out sort of about the same time. So uh -huh. I bet you they looked at this movie and thought, oh, that would make a good alien. That yeah. would make a good oh, alien okay. look. And it was nice. an evil alien to boot. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Something kind of amazing, too, is that almost that whole film was shot in a school gym, high school school gym in North Carolina. Hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. It was built as a uh, set. It was wow. all, all pretty much mm -hmm. just a big inside set. Did not know that. The you did your homework. The trees and everything. Yeah, he it really was did his homework. <laughs> 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 wow. But it just goes to show what you can do with the set and camera angles, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's inside of a gym, hang black tarps on top, you build yourself a log cabin and uh, Sure, and they use simple tricks trees. like a, mm -hmm. a wet angle lens and distortion to, mm -hmm. you know, show the point of view of the evil, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. I, I love the trick of just taking the dry ice and placing it in different locations of the set, yeah. recording oh, yeah. it, yeah. and yeah. then playing it in reverse, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, so it looks like it's all sucking away, yeah. which is well, just yep, awesome. There's the... Um, there's the first person perspective of you as the the creature, the, the evil chasing after them. Too. Yeah, I love that angle. Yeah. I love that shot. That's and that's that when they use the distortion and the wet angle lens to yeah. signify yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. And it, I think they just <coughs> uh, attached the camera to two by four and had two guys um, running with it. That's, you know, the cheap independent filmmaker yeah. way that's of doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Gives you that nice kind of feel. The other uh, comedic yeah. effect I thought was really good was when. Um, Ash and Annie and Jake and his girlfriend are all in the room and there's noises happening all around them as the evil guy tries to get into them and they must have been going like this from the director because all their heads are going this way and then that yeah. way. Oh yeah, yeah. It was all coordinated and it was so yeah. funny. Yeah. I was just yeah. busting out laughing when I was watching <laughs> that. I found funny. I, I read um, the Bobby Sue character, mm -hmm. uh, the girl. Mm -hmm. um, she was modeled after Holly Hunter because uh, mm. Sam Raimi had been a roommate um, of hers. They mm -hmm. all lived oh. in an apartment together. Sure, yeah. And so he um, wrote the Bobby Sue character to emulate Holly Hunter, hmm. which I was just wondering, <laughs> you know, 
she you watch her movie she seems so sweet and debonair and everything is she really that redneck <laughs> 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 well i was seeing that guy in her and i was like man she's really attractive and he is this guy's this guy's got missing teeth yeah, and you know yeah. well you see yeah. i see something like that and i'm like thank god there is hope for me <laughs> <laughs> Because that, that just does, that just doesn't happen only in movies. That happens in real life, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, small town. Yeah. That's all, you know, small town. If he's no the only one, one with, really with the, if he's the only one there with a job, you know, because yeah. he had the truck, so <laughs> that, that that could have been a good selling yeah. point. <laughs> so I guess um, three out of four panel members um, enjoy Evil Dead too. Sorry, and next, next well four well pound, people. The are type of film I'm going to enjoy. And, and Ebert actually gave it a three out of four star rating. Sweet, <laughs> but but jo Joanna says it sucks. Sorry. She, she says go see the original. <laughs> yeah. I say watch both. Yeah. You know, if, you, if you're going to do it, do it right. Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2, Army of Darkness, and a uh, pint of bourbon. <laughs> Just go for it. <laughs> Any final thoughts, gentlemen? Um, mm. I'm <coughs> heading on to Army of Darkness probably by tomorrow. Oh, you're going to love, yeah. love Army of Darkness. That takes it a step further. Yeah. Cool. Um, even funnier. I, uh, do, do you like Army of Darkness? Yes, I, I did. No, I did. Don't I did. I did. I, it's been a while since I've watched it, but I remember really liking it. I don't know, but I, it's the second one. I can't get over that one. Sorry. Shop smart. And smart. didn't you Shop say they were smart. doing a, yeah. a sequel to yeah. Army of yeah. Darkness? Yeah, there, there is a director's cut of Army of Darkness out there. I don't like it because they cut my favorite line out of the movie. <laughs> um, but it, it's that director's cut that sets up what the sequel is going to be, the mm. end of the director's mm. cut. I prefer the <laughs> smart ending. Um, which is what you'll see when you see yeah. Army of Darkness. So no spoilers. <laughs> no spoilers. <laughs> After you watch it, I'll let you know what the alternate ending okay. was. Um, thank you for joining us, and uh, thanks, uh, Matt and Derek, thanks for coming for on. Thanks for having us. Love yeah. having you guys on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thanks for Joanna for uh, being yeah. the co-host for today. I know. People are going to beat me up. And pl uh -oh. please join us for the close. <laughs> Bye. What a great show. I love getting a chance to come on. <laughs> we will. <laughs> Come on, this big boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we will have to make more reasons to get you on. I smell a new segment coming. Ooh. Please join us next week when we will play Pass the Porcupine. That just didn't sound right. <laughs> <laughs> you may be right. Thank you to our guests, Matt and Derek, for coming on today and sharing your knowledge of film. We hope you had a great time and aren't leaving the studio screaming in agony. Speaking of screaming in agony, with all this horror, what is one of your favorite movie deaths? Oh, that is a toughie. Hard to pick just one. I mean, I could change my mind tomorrow, but I think I will go with Girl Meets Truck in Devil's Rejects. Oh, that's terrible. But there are so many more. How about Eaten Alive by Bugs and Creepshow or... Oh, the alien out of the chest, or, you know, the thing, the letter face. Okay, okay, You've, you're kind of scaring me, Joanna. Good, as I should. Be sure to check us out on Facebook. Find us at Facebook.com, talk films to me. This just in. There's a great opportunity for area filmmakers. The 2014 Eichelberg Film Dayton Festival, now in its sixth year, the Film Dayton Festival celebrates the best of film from around the globe and here in our region. Short and feature length films are currently being accepted for consideration as part of the festival, which will run August 22nd to 24th, 2014. Visit filmdayton.com festival for information on how to submit. I guess that would be all. Bye, Bye everybody. everybody.